Hey everyone, this is Larry with Today I Feel Like. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Fuji X-T5 camera. I bought this in July for my birthday and I've had this for a few months now and I have some thoughts about it. So let's jump in and here we go. So as we talk about the good and the bad of this camera, let's start off with one of the main things that attracted me to the X-T5 in the first place, and that is the size and the styling of this camera. This thing looks like an old school film camera, and because it's an APS-C camera, it's smaller and lighter than a full frame camera, which I've been shooting with. And so I really wanted something that was gonna be smaller, had smaller lenses, but also because sometimes when I travel, I go to large cities where people often get robbed for their camera gear. I wanted something that was gonna look sort of indiscreet or really look like it was just sort of a cheapy old camera. And this styling really gives you that. It kind of looks like an old school film camera. And I've had people come up to me on the streets and actually ask me if I was shooting film with it. Now there's a lot more good to talk about with this camera, but before we get onto that, there's one bad point that I wanted to mention that I noticed right away as I took this camera out of the box. And that is, it has an exposed sensor. So when there's no lens on the camera, the sensor is just wide open, ready for dust to land on it and ruin your images. I really wish they would have added a sensor cover on to this camera, much the way they have with the Canon R5 and the Sony a7R 3 two cameras that I also own. And I love that both of those cameras have that feature. Well, since we talked about one of the bad points, let's just stick with the bad for a quick moment. And one of them is, well, ergonomics. Now, I know a lot of people say they like the ergonomics of this camera, but to be perfectly honest with you, I think that it's just okay. The ergonomics are just okay. But when you actually shoot in vertical mode, that's when the ergonomics get bad. So the handle here is just really sort of shallow. It's not much of a handle. You can hold it. You can see pinky has no place to go, but for the most part, it feels relatively comfortable in the hand there. The problem is, is when you turn the camera vertically and you try and shoot vertically, it really is sort of like a scrunched up sort of feeling. It's not nearly as comfortable as if you had a handle on here or even just a much deeper grip to give you a better sense of control of the camera. Well, I don't wanna stay negative for too long, so let's jump back over to one of the good points and that is image quality. The images that come off of this 40 megapixel sensor are just absolutely beautiful. They really are fantastic with wonderful colors, great roll off, the high resolution makes it very easy to, uh, to crop and so you can recompose your images in post. It is absolutely fantastic. Now, I wasn't really convinced that Fuji would be able to pull off a high resolution sensor like this, but they did it and they did it really, really well. But not just talking about it, let me show you some of the images. Well, let's talk about another bad point. And one other thing that I don't like about this camera is, well, the autofocus. Now, this is my first Fuji camera. I'm coming from the Sony and Canon side. And from my understanding, this autofocus in this camera is actually really good for Fuji. Now, that's the key point for Fuji. It's decent, but it's not really that good. I haven't found that the autofocus on this camera is very sticky at all. I'm used to having a very, very sticky autofocusing system from Sony or Canon. This camera, I found that either it would grab the subject and then let it go, or it would never really grab it. It just really is kind of hit and miss. And so, um, yeah, I think that it works better in photos versus videos, but the autofocusing system is just okay at best. So another really nice thing about this camera is that it shoots 6K video. That's right, you could shoot 6K at 24 frames a second or 30 frames a second. And 
6K video just looks really, really nice. It gives you a little bit more resolution than 4K, so if you need to punch in some, you can do so without losing any image quality. But here we are, we can take a look. This is shooting at 6K right now on the X-T5, and it looks really pretty good. The biggest problem is if you're shooting yourself like this is that there's no flip up screen on the camera so you can't really see yourself. You're just kind of guessing about where you are in the frame. But if you have the right conditions and everything is working for you, you can get some really nice video out of this camera. Another issue that I have with the X-T5 is the autofocus during filming. Now, it seems to lock on fairly well when you're uh, recording, but it can pulse at times. But the real issue I have is if you try and do a zoom, then it just seems to lose focus and it takes forever to reacquire it. And sometimes it seems to rack all the way through the whole focus range before it reacquires. And it just makes your shot really unusable. And at that point, the only thing you can really do is just stop recording readjust your focal length and then start recording again and sometimes you need to or want to be able to zoom while you're actually recording this camera is just not very good at it now this next issue is a real deal breaker for me and that is audio now i've had a number of issues with this camera where i've plugged in an external microphone like a wireless mic or a shotgun mic and for whatever reason it just didn't connect I was still return, uh, recording the internal audio with this instead of actually recording from the external microphone that was connected to the camera. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's a problem with my camera or if it's some larger issue, but it's happened enough that I no longer trust this camera when I have a microphone plugged into it. So yeah, that's a real major, major issue for me because I am a true hybrid shooter where I shoot a lot of video and a lot of photos, and I want to depend on my camera to be able to do both really well. All right, all right, I'm done talking about bad stuff with this camera, so let's talk about something good. And another great point about this camera is that because it is an APS-C size sensor camera, the lenses are going to be smaller. And I love when I'm traveling not to have to carry around giant heavy lenses that not only attract a lot of attention, but they're just more burdensome to take with you because they're heavy and they're large. And when you have smaller lenses, you just are more willing to take your camera with you everywhere you go. And there's all kinds of great lenses for Fuji that you can get. One of my favorites is the 70 to 300 because it's so light, it's so small, and the image quality on that lens is absolutely superb. Even at 40 megapixels, it really performs just like a madman. It is so good. I'm impressed. It is really an amazing lens. And if you haven't tried it, definitely check that one out. So the last good thing I want to mention about this camera is the battery life. I took this thing out to the San Francisco Zoo and shot with it for probably five or six hours. I got there early in the day. I stayed till they closed and I was able to make it through the entire day with just the one battery. Now, I will say that as I got closer towards the end of the day, the battery did start to look like it was gonna die on me some, but because this camera actually charges with a USB-C port, I was able to go ahead and plug in a little portable power bank and top off the battery and keep on shooting. So yeah, if you're out there and you're not, uh, you're not sure if you're gonna be able to make it through the day, just take a portable power bank with you and keep shooting. In fact, I only have the one battery for this camera. I haven't actually bought another one. I just have the one that came with it because the battery life has been so good that I found that I can get through a full day of shooting without needing a second battery. And when I find that I might need some extra juice, I plug in a power bank to it and top it off. All right, well, let's wrap this thing up and give you, I'll give you my final conclusions about this camera. And I will say that I really enjoy shooting with the Fuji X-T5 when I'm shooting stills. If I know I'm going out for just a day of pure photography, I will grab for this camera because I really enjoy shooting with it. It's a lot of fun. The lenses are really small and makes for an overall lightweight package. You have that nice high resolution 40 megapixel sensor that looks good. I love the film recipes that you can do with this camera. But when I'm shooting video, or if I'm going somewhere where I think I might shoot both, like out of town, 
I'm likely grabbing another camera because I don't feel this camera is reliable enough for video shooting and it's not very easy to vlog with because it doesn't have that uh, fully articulating screen. Now I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to blame the camera for not having the screen really. I knew that when I bought it so I'm not going to ding it and say it's a bad thing but it's one of those things that if I know I'm going to be doing some shooting and filming myself I'm going to grab a camera that makes it a little bit easier for me to do that. So now who is this camera for? I would say really for anyone from a serious, you know, a serious enthusiast or amateur to a professional, you can enjoy this camera and really get high quality images out of it. But if you're someone who is a true hybrid shooter, I'm not sure this is the best model for you. This is really a photographer's camera. And if you need video, although it can do high quality video, it's not really where it excels at, so yeah. Anyways, there you go. I'll leave links to this camera down below in the video description so that you can check it out. I also have some lens reviews coming up for the X-Mount, the Fuji X-Mount, so check those out. But I'll leave links to, uh, to the camera down below in the video description so you can check it out. I'll also leave links to my Amazon page and my social media contacts so you can reach me elsewhere. And I hope you enjoyed seeing this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and please subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram. And I am Larry with Today I Feel Like. Thanks for coming back to see me. Come back and see me soon. And until next time, love, peace, and hair grease. Peace.